So, I just rewatched The Prodigal Returns, a drama produced by Jehovah's Witnesses, and it was a complete masterpiece. This movie was released back in 2013 when you would actually get cool releases in the regional conventions and it sparked the whole genre of Jehovah's Witness movies. Classics like What is True Love? You weren't at the meeting again last night. Is, is that what this is about? And Remember the Wife of Lot? And God's word says that sex is meant to be between a man and a woman who are married to each other. Look, I don't mean to be rude, sir, but the world has changed. Honey, maybe we're being too harsh on gays. Some people just seem to be programmed that way. But none of them would be able to match this masterpiece. So sit back and relax, dear viewer, as I take you through one of the greatest films of the modern era. And even if you've never been a Jehovah's Witness yourself, this film will give you a clear portrait on the joys of being brought up in a doomsday cult. But remember, if you cringe, you lose. And when you lose, it's gonna happen, believe me. Please comment on the exact moment you lost it. Deal? First off, we need to talk about the plot of the film. Our main protagonist is David, a young Jehovah's Witness who works with his father and his narcissist brother in the family company. Barker Construction. David receives a job offer in New York City from his friend, Al, a sassy JW who likes to drink and flirt with women. In other words, Al is spiritually weak. David navigates through office politics, falls in love with this blonde chick, and his spiritual routine starts to suffer. Will David be able to save his relationship with Jehovah? Or will his bad decisions spiral out of control? Let's find out. The movie starts out with young David reading a Bible passage in his first public reading. Then he said, they're squandered his property by living a debauched life. You know this was shot before COVID-19 because the Kingdom Hall is actually full of people. And guess what passage David is reading? The parable of the prodigal son. Foreshadowing. You see what they did there? Always been with me. And all the things that are mine are yours. More foreshadowing. You can already tell Al will grow up to be a terrible human being because he does normal child stuff like getting bored in a two hour meeting designed for adults, <laughs> you horrible piece of shit. You see that David? I knew you could do it. What kind of primitive interface is this? Also, apparently Al barely knows how to write. To dazed. That's what you get for not paying attention at the meetings, you illiterate fuck. Undoubtedly, the final part of the final part of the last days. Shortly before the... We alive yet? wants to know. Now we get introduced to James, by far the most unlikable character in the film. Like, by a mile. <laughs> he likes controlling his brother. Not today, big brother. Hey James, hold on. That's a two-man job. Here, let me give you a hand. You know it's a two-man job. The other man should have been down here by now to hell. Your brother's going for a job interview in the city. Job interview for what? You told me and your mother about it last night. Mom, I gotta go. Honey, you're not staying for breakfast? No, I can't. Here, here, John, the Crawfords accepted your bid. Okay. Hey, Dad. Hey, David, you're not eating with us. No, I gotta go. But breakfast is almost ready. David, I'd sure like to talk with you before you go. Yeah, why don't you join us for a while? We can talk about things like, you know, the weather and how you never told your older brother that you were looking for another job. I'm sorry. I didn't know I needed your permission. The web marketing company in the city. <laughs> Web marketing? What experience do you have with that? None, but they're hiring for some big project and Al recommended me. I'm meeting him first to get some tips before the interview. Tips from Al? I mean Al Phillips. Please don't tell me you revived your friendship with that loser. Calling his spiritual brothers losers. He's not a loser. He's been with the company for two years and he's already a project manager. I'm sorry, I'll rephrase that. He's a spiritual loser. Spiritual loser? 
Apparently, James can read hearts. You know, James, it's amazing to me that you have time to be both a carpenter and a judge. Ooh, okay, got you there, buddy. Okay, it's time to eat. Honey, let's do our daily text and then feed these monkeys. No, don't get me wrong. I'm definitely so excited about this opportunity. It's just my family isn't. <sighs> Your brother is such a control freak, man. He needs to mellow out. He's gonna have a stroke or something. <laughs> He'll be all right. My main concern is my parents. I don't think they want me to leave the family business, and my dad wonders if this is the best move for me. Classic case of parents not wanting to let go. But look, years from now, when they're old and feeble and Barker Family Construction has gone under, they are gonna be so grateful that their son has this rock solid job with a Fortune 500 company. Nice, Al. I'm right, and here we are. Wow, is this it the whole building? No, nah, it's just two floors. You think I stand a chance? Of course. This is apparently David's first time in the big city. You gotta sound like a company man. Yes, sir, I'll do whatever it takes, sir, whatever you need. Stuff like that, it's very important. Right, right. Jehovah's Witnesses are really good at kissing ass, so this is the perfect job for David. David Barker, welcome to True North. Thank you, Mr. Benson. Hey, Will, my computer's been running slowly. I need you to stop by this morning. Check it out for me. First off, Al, you're not my boss. Second, I'll get to it when I can. And third, maybe your computer wouldn't be running so slow if you'd stop downloading things you shouldn't be. Ooh, get it? Because all downloads pour into his computer? He's probably into some really kinky stuff. <laughs> also, this dude appears in another JW film, the one where the kid and the grandpa die in a car crash. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> it's Corey. Hey. All right, well, we'll stop. He's starting to blush, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> This looks like the beginning of the Watchtower Cinematic Universe, the WCU. Bah. Goodbye, little sheep. You start next week. Great to finally meet you. Wow, news are on your travels fast. Well, Al here has been singing your praises for two weeks. I half expected you to have a halo. <laughs> well, it's very nice to meet you, Vivian. I admit, the part about walking on water was a bit of an exaggeration. This is the only time Jesus is referenced in this film. Hey, babe. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Here are the sketches. Hey, Al. Hey, Taylor, back from your long weekend at the shore, I see. Yeah. How'd things work out? Oh, don't ask. Are all men shallow, or only the ones that I've dated? I don't know, I've never dated one. <laughs> mm, Taylor, sure I you have David Barker, our new project assistant, and one of the most unshallow men I know. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, David. Nice to meet you too, Taylor. I was watching you earlier. I mean, I saw you earlier in the lobby. I was waiting for <laughs> right, the interview. Of course. I guess you forgot to mention that he's also a stalker. An unshallow stalker? I can't say I've ever met one. Well, you two will make a great team. Stalker and professional flirt. <laughs> Taylor is in creative. Seriously though, congratulations on getting the job. I'm looking forward to working with you. Normal human beings don't talk like this. None of us are professional actors. I thought you said we were gonna talk before you agreed to anything. Now you're telling me you're gonna start next week? Dad, I didn't expect to be offered the job on the spot. I didn't expect to be offered the job at all. But couldn't you wait just another day or two? Well, I mentioned that to Al, but he felt I needed to jump on this right away. Now it makes sense. Al Phillips, of course. It does make sense. I was offered a job for which I have no experience. And they were interviewing people with lots of it. Why would I wait? How about this? Dad asked you to. You know, the man who put a roof James, over your head. James, please. Shut up and eat your food, James. What impact will this have on your spiritual routine? I don't think any at all, Dad. Okay, well, have you considered the extra time each week to commute? Rush hour to and from the city each day can be pretty brutal. But there are other brothers who do that. What about the hours they expect you to work? Will it interfere with your meetings, your auxiliary pioneering? Well, I may have to put that on hold, but it shouldn't interfere with my meetings. What do you mean it shouldn't? You did tell them about our meetings, didn't you? Do you mind? I'm having a conversation with mom and dad. I wonder if this is how things went down in the writing department. Hmm, how unlikable should we make James in this movie? Yes. Jehovah's Witnesses have the happiest families, folks. I am really worried about those boys. They are two very different personalities, that's for sure. But they're both hard workers, they have good hearts, and I know they love Jehovah. Apparently, Andrew's dad can read hearts too. 
We are dealing with a family of omniscient beings. Oh, those kids are gonna get a good whooping when they get home. I have a couple of return visits we could do. Aren't you gonna miss the family business? Let me think. No more splinters. No more bruised thumbs. No more older brother micromanaging my work. Let me get back to you on that. But the people I'll be working with are super cool. Turn around, Andrew. If I see your face again, I'm gonna lose it. Ah! So I wonder if your friend Al was at his meeting tonight. My guess would be... Not? Can you shut the fuck up? Hey, David. You wanna play some ball? Come on, let's go. I gotta do this. <laughs> David learns for the first time that traffic blows. Now we get a silly compilation of David goofy moments adjusting to office politics and learning how to use a printer. James, if you'll read that for us. Hey, wake up. Let the man sleep. Oh, Brother Harper, I gotta take this. Hello? Even his holy arm has gained salvation for him. Jehovah has made his salvation. These are the common symptoms for Jehovah's Witnesses who are becoming unexemplary or lukewarm. Working overtime, being late to the meetings, and being distracted by work when you're out preaching. These witnesses are labeled as bad association, and most members will keep their distance from them. Most loving religion on earth. Hey, where are things have been going? Dad, how can you even say that? I still study, I go to meetings, I'm late. I know that, son, I know that, but you've made some. Did you see that expression? Now the elders are trying to keep him in line. Hey, David, how are you going to stay indoctrinated if you're missing a lot of meetings? And now David is indulging in one of the many carnal pleasures forbidden in this religion, befriending non-Jehovah's Witnesses. Nice people are bad association if they don't live by Bible principles. James, you're up late. Yeah, we need this thing for tomorrow. The old gun is still jamming up, huh? Just the third time this week. I know it well. I must have repaired that thing a hundred times. Why doesn't Dad just get a new one? I think he has some sort of sentimental attachment to it. It's probably the first one he ever owned. <laughs> probably. How about you? They have you working late again. Yeah, yeah. Um, this project we're working on, it's uh, for a huge client. We're uh, burning the candle at both ends trying to meet some unrealistic deadline to make account services happy. Sounds intense. So is this job everything you thought it would be? Uh, to be honest, I didn't know what it would be. I like the corporate vibe and the challenge of doing something different. It's awesome collaborating on a project. Maybe someday I'll get sick of it. I don't know, like, like anything else, but for now, I like it. It's kind of exciting. Seems like a perfectly reasonable approach to life to me. Hmm, I wonder if James will ruin this nice moment. Well, you'll do well with it. I'm sure you're one of the best workers that they have. Thanks. Say, if you ever need a recommendation. No, thanks. There's one shark infested ocean I have no desire to swim in. Whoa, whoa, your brother just offered you a job opportunity, right. asshole. Well, uh, I better get to bed. Rush hour is only a few hours away. I'll see you in the morning. Hey, David. Can I ask you something? Yeah? Just drop it, James. Stop talking. What's going on, man? You mean other than what we just talked about? All this overtime for some corporate monster that could care less about you? The association, it's, it's not good. It's starting to affect you. Sure, David might be working for a corporate monster, but you're working for a handful of cult leaders who couldn't care less about you. Let, let's not even talk about the association in this cult. At least David's boss seems likable enough. I can barely look at your boss without having my guts tremble. You know, for a minute, I actually thought that that you were interested in what I'm doing. I am interested in what you're doing. And that's why I'm worried. Well, stop. You've got nothing to worry about. I'm doing fine. You're doing fine? 
In less than two months, you've missed six meetings and three weekends of field service. Are you keeping track? David's reaction here is completely justified. What a, what a control freak. Anything else, Detective Barker? Actually, yeah. Your watchtower is never studied. You hardly answer at the meetings. All you ever talk about is work. That's not fine. You know it. It's, it's like you're becoming a carbon copy of Al Phillips. You really need to get some new material. I warned you about him. And it's all coming true. Well, then I guess you can add profit to your many roles, How then. about brother who cares? Who stuck his neck out for his entire life? Who doesn't want to see his brother get hurt? Ooh, savior, Don't too. go in and mock me. It's just mind-boggling to see anything redeeming in that guy. You're just jealous, aren't you? Jealous of Al? Are you crazy? No, jealous right to the bone. Because Al, unlike you, he, he enjoys life. He makes friends with everyone. He's happy. He's successful. People in the congregation liked him. That is until people like you started bad-mouthing People like me? Yeah, boring, uptight, self-righteous, I could go on. Well, I'm struggling to stay on the cramp road of life. You're off running around on the wide and spacious with dreams of being some corporate big shot. You're just jealous of that too. Not on your life. I want to do what's right in God's eyes. And I want the same thing for you too. You only think about yourself. You smug little- Go ahead, say it. Yeah, go ahead, James. I actually really like this scene because it shows a level of self-awareness that we've never seen in any movies released after it. And this scenario plays out all the time with Jehovah's Witnesses. Brother falls slightly out of line, some uprighteous asshole like James starts spreading rumors about them, then everyone starts to look down and keep their distance from said member, which makes them look for friendships outside of the group. And this leads them to become more distant from the congregation and more members avoid them and the cycle goes on. The reason why so many young people leave this religion is beautifully captured here. Because the righteous members are encouraged to be assholes like James and the more independent members like David are harassed and self shunned. It's an extremely toxic environment and like this film shows, it creates family problems that shouldn't even exist in the first place. Do what you want David. I can't stop you, mom and dad can't stop you, Jehovah's not going to stop you, this is your decision. Now you're finally getting but it. I don't know if you get it. As you sink deeper into this world's mess, who do you think is going to reach in and pull you out? I'm not. As of now, I'm done. Thank God, some boundaries. You know, it just sickens me to think how much you're gonna hurt mom and dad. Of course, James couldn't leave without dropping some emotional manipulation. Go to bed. I was a good brother to you. And narcissistic remarks. <laughs> some good brother. Come on. Really, there's not much else. I started working for my dad's company when I was 16. Barker Family Construction. <laughs> a forward-moving, privately-owned firm based out of a modest facility. Our garage. <laughs> that features a highly simpatico workforce. My dad, mom, and older brother. <laughs> Our mission statement? No job too small. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a nice group to work for. <laughs> yeah, I guess it was. I I just kind of grew out of it, you know? Hmm. Hence my recent job change. Now with your construction background, how do you explain the nice guy no cursing part? I wonder if this stereotype has some truth to it. I mean, are construction people just more prone to cussing? Or what the fuck is going on? That. Well, my family is very religious, so we were raised studying the Bible. Okay, what religion? Christian. Well, I figured that, but what church? This is another indication that Jehovah's Witness might be on their way out. When asked about their religion, they just call themselves Christian because, <laughs> let's face it, no one really wants to be identified with a very known doomsday cult, especially to the girl you like. Uh, we're Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, really? You know, there was a girl in high school that was a uh, Jehovah Witness. She was really, really into it. Actually, some of the kids kind of made fun of her. I'll tell you the truth, I don't know much about it. 
It looks like Al is going to send out a search party if we uh, if we don't get back. We wouldn't want that now, would we? No. <laughs> Al saves David's ass once again. Oh no, look at those horrible human beings, partying and having fun. Research for our project? How was your coffee break? Uh, good. Why do you ask? So you are interested in tea? We had coffee, that's all. Oh sure, it starts with coffee. Now if you don't mind, I have work to do. Actually, Romeo, I have some life-altering news for you. How about we head to the think tank? You remember my cousin Anton, right? Uh, yeah, the one that lives downtown? Yeah, well, he called to tell me that two of his roommates just moved out of the apartment. So... So he's gotta rent the rooms out in order for to stay there. Go on. Do I have to spell this out for you? Two rooms, two people, two miles from work? It's too good to pass up. Duh, it's too expensive. This is a no-brainer. You really think that we should sublet for Manton? Think about it. No more long commute. No more getting stuck in traffic. No more having your loving family scrutinize every move you make. And the cherry on top is that we get to room together. You may be forgetting that I make way less money than you. Dave, it's only a matter of time before you get a raise, probably a promotion. Well, until then, I can't afford it. Don't you have any savings you can tap into? No, David, the savings were supposed to be for pioneering. Yeah, some. All right, let me talk to my parents first, and I'll get back to you. I'll be up front with you. As a favor to me, Anton was willing to let you rent out the room instead of his girlfriend's brother. But you gotta act now or the deal's gonna be gone by this weekend. The real problem with David is that he never learned how to say no. Look, you're 21 years old. You can't live with your parents forever. Don't you think it's time you leave the nest? Spread your wings? Be your own man. You're right. All right, I'll take it. I'm in. Fantastic. Let me just call Anton. Hey, Anton. Yeah. Yeah, my boy David's in. Tonight? Sure, Pete's. Yeah. Alright. Okay, we'll see you there. Bye. Done. We'll meet him tonight. We'll seal the deal over a couple beers. No, we won't. I have a talk tonight. In fact, I have to finish writing it. Can't you get somebody to replace you? Oh, I hate to do that again. Just do what I do. Don't show up. Somebody always covers. I'm not doing that. Come on, man. It's just this once. It's kind of crazy to imagine Fine. a time when Zoom meetings were not a thing. Hey, Brother Harper. It's David. I'm Kid, thanks. How are you? I'm Kid. Hey, uh, something came up at work, and I'm not going to be able to give my talk tonight. I'm so sorry. I, I really hope you can find someone to cover for me. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. All right, bye. Oh no, a tavern. What horrible sinners. <laughs> also, this is Al's cousin, and you might recognize him from the next Watchtower award-winning film, What is True Love? In real life, he's married to this woman, who became a kind of mini JW celebrity on Instagram. <laughs> she even runs her own multi-level marketing scheme selling essential oils. You can't make this shit up. Two cults at the same time. Coltception. Oh, you scared me. What are you still doing up? Do parents still do this cartoony shit? How old is David? 15? I didn't know you had to work so late. Last I heard you were giving a talk tonight. I'm sorry, I uh I should have told you. Some Work-related stuff came up, and uh, one thing led to another. Son, we need to talk. Please, would you sit down for a minute? Ooh, maybe they're gonna have the birds and the bees talk. It might be a little late for that, father. You know, your mother and I are very worried about you. You've been missing your meetings, your service your family worship with us, and it's been happening more and more. I know, Dad. It'll be a little insane just till we meet this deadline. And then what? What about the deadline after that? I used to work for a big company. 
the more you keep giving, the more they'll keep taking. Yeah, it reminds me of a certain corporation I know. Where are you going to draw the line? When I worked for you, we had deadlines, things that went wrong. We worked overtime. Sometimes, but very rarely did it interfere with our theocratic schedule. I've been pretty successful at keeping the business in its place. You have, Dad. I know. You set a good example that way. Why don't you consider coming back to the family business with us? You can get stabilized, and, and I can give you a small raise. I can't. No. Dad, I'm sorry. Construction, it's great for you and James, but not for me. I'm really happy where I'm at. And the people, they respect me. I like this job. The conversation should have ended here. Is a job worth sacrificing your relationship with Jehovah? Of course not. It's not like that's happening. The Bible's filled with examples of people who felt the same way in the beginning, but then something happened gradually. I'm not quite sure how that applies to me. Here, let me show you something, Dave. Maybe this will help. Read Hebrews 2.1. What are you doing, you old man? That Bible is old light. That is why it is necessary for us to pay more than the usual attention to the things heard by us, that we may never drift away. Okay? We need to pay attention because any one of us could drift, and it could lead to our spiritual shipwreck. Sometimes it takes other people to point out that we're drifting. Well, I've got lots of people pointing. You, Mom, James, the elders. The list is pretty long. A whole network of people who can't mind their own business and who measure spirituality by an outward performance of weekly ritual. I need to tell you something. What is it? I'm going to move out. What? To where? Al's cousin Anton. He's got an apartment in the city. What's wrong with living here? I need more freedom. Some independence. Freedom and independence from what? Come on, Dad. Where do I start? I feel like I'm constantly being questioned. Where are you going? Who are you with? What's the name of the movie you're seeing? Oh, he's not good association. You need to use the internet in the living room. Even when you don't say anything, I can tell. I feel so restricted. David, we live by Bible principles in our house. They're not restrictive, they protect us. My point is, I need to answer for myself. All of us have an accounting to God, right? That's true. Why is David the most reasonable person in this movie? I just want to make my own decisions then, right or wrong. Is that such a bad thing? If you know what's right and you choose to do what's wrong, then it is a bad thing. Honey, what's going on? He wants to move into the city, into an apartment with Al and his cousin Anton. What? Why would you want to do that? I don't want to get into all the details right now. Let's just say it'll be a lot closer to work and we'll leave it at that. I don't understand. You have everything you need here. You save money, and you're surrounded by people that love you. That's the problem. I'm feeling loved to death. There's no such thing. Oh, there is. And this family is a prime example. Overprotective parenting, it's a thing. Well, what congregation would you go to? I don't know. How could this possibly be the main concern on her mind? Your dad knows brothers in the city. He could call someone and find out. No, that's all right. I'll take care of it when I'm ready. When you're ready? David, that's one of the first things you should find out. Mom, please. Can you even afford a place in the city? Since you asked, I'm going to need to tap into the savings account you set up for me. I was supposed to help you pioneer. It's my money, isn't it? 
Are you gonna question how I use that also? David! No, that's all right. It's your money. Thank you. Well, well, well. What new pain are you causing the family now, little brother? I hate James so much. He literally just waltzed in to poison the well. Stay out of this, James. Oh, no, that's okay. I already heard most of it. So you want to move in with Al's cousin, Anton. I wonder which one of his girlfriends is spending the night these days. You mean Anton is not in the truth? Is that true? You didn't mention that. Oh, I'm sure there's a lot more he's not telling you. Now you and your mentor can really find out what this world has to offer. David, why are you putting yourself in that situation? You're just asking for it's trouble. It's no big deal. I can handle it. Another late night at the office, huh? You know, it's so ironic that the talk I covered for today dealt with putting spiritual things first. Stay out of my face, James. You know, maybe not so much ironic, perhaps a bit more providential. I'm sure Jehovah knew you weren't fit to give that talk. Stop it, both of you! David, what's gotten into you? What the hell do you mean, Dad? James was literally on David's face, provoking him, telling him how he didn't deserve to give that talk. He was just begging to be tossed into that piano. His butt cheeks were yearning to play some Mozart. If your son tries that intimidation shit out in the real world, he's gonna end up in a ditch real soon. Do you see what I mean? This is exactly what I am talking about. I am done being cross-examined and scrutinized. I'm moving into my own place with people that I approve of, and I'm answering for myself. You know what, just let him go! He deserves whatever he gets! John, what is happening to my family? Congratulations, your family has just been watchtowered. Play cold games, win cold prices. I love how they made New York seem as shitty as possible. They even overlaid a, a siren sound. Housemate. Hey, let me help you sort that. Thank you. There's still a lot in the car, which is probably parked illegally. <laughs> well, what do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. David, welcome. Hey, come on in. Make yourself at home. Thanks. Hey, uh, here's the first month's rent. Fantastic. <laughs> David apparently has never played a video game before. Come on, man. I'm showing you around. All right, so the kitchen is there. Here we have Anton's girlfriend, Jessica. Jessica, this is David. The newest roommate. Hey. Hey, it's nice to meet you. Same. You want a beer? Uh, I'm okay, thanks. Alright, enjoy the tour. Well, at least she didn't try to sell him some essential oils. Anyways, we have the bathroom here. This is Anton's room. Wait, does... Does Jessica live here? Nah, she's just a frequent house guest. She's hot, isn't she? And this is my room. Nice. It's a work in progress. And finally, last but not least, drum roll please. Ta-da! Your bedroom. You like? Ooh, what did I do to deserve the luxury suite? Bah. With a view. Good hey, Mr. Glass Half Empty, how about you focus on what you're getting? This is yours. Can't put a price on that. Well, my checkbook says you can. Uh, chump change soon enough. Oh, my car. Come on. Hey, and I told Anton about the little housewarming party next week. I mean, for all I like David, he should have checked out the apartment first before agreeing to move in. I still can't believe it's 115 bucks for double parking. There, we should be synced up. You know what? I could do with some serious drinking myself. Good choice. There will be plenty of that, I can assure you. Mark them down. Aye, aye, Captain. Hey, Phillips. Big party, huh? Lots of booze? Really? Yeah, well, guest list is a little tight, otherwise I'd invite you. <laughs> Not likely. Say, Al, your buddy David here told me the other week that you two are 
Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, so? Interesting. I never knew that. You know, my wife talks about the Bible with a witness woman. She comes by the house. That's great, Will. Can't say I agree with them. But what I've been hearing about Jehovah's Witnesses, and what I know about you, well, let's just say there seems to be a discrepancy. That's all. I guess every office has a James. No wonder he's sitting alone. Also, Al is actually doing this dude a huge favor. So now he can go back to his wife and tell her JWs are full of BS and spare themselves a whole lot of suffering. Thank you again, Al. Rewatching this again, this is one of the things I miss least about being a Jehovah's Witness. The constant feeling of angst and trying to uphold Jehovah's name through your actions. That 24-7 fear that you do something slightly out of line and some asshole like James 2 here calls you out on it. <laughs> Okay, was that just me or was that a very odd conversation? No, that was definitely odd. Yeah, odd and unwarranted. Forget him, he's crazy. You told me that you were a Jehovah Witness. Yeah, that's right. Maybe we shouldn't talk about religion at work. Don't be silly, we're at lunch. I had some neighbors, they were Jehovah's. No offense, nice people. Just a little too devoted. Well, they live what they believe. What do you believe? Uh... Well, we believe that God's name is Jehovah. His son is Jesus Christ. Uh, humans will be restored to perfection and live forever on a paradise earth, and that the dead will be resurrected. That's just scratching the surface, really. Wow, that's some heavy stuff. It really is. I never realized how batshit crazy the dogma sounds to the outsiders, even to other Christians. You know, I went to church when I was a kid, but I can't say I remember any of that. <laughs> I vaguely remember that you don't celebrate birthdays. Yeah, that's true. What's wrong with birthdays? We have no problem if other people celebrate theirs, but we don't because they have pagan origins. Yeah, so do wedding rings. And the Bible doesn't really put them in a favorable light. The Bible also speaks nothing but bad things about dogs, but you still love them to that, don't you? Al, last year when we threw you a party, you didn't say anything. I don't really make a big deal about that stuff. It's a conscience thing. You know, we really should be getting back to work. Wait, doesn't your religion punish people when they do something bad? Well, there are certain things that the Bible condemns. And if you get caught, you get a lecture, promise not to do it again, cry a few tears. It's pretty straightforward. Al has mastered the system. Actually, a lot of JWs have mastered the system. I've met a few who have been disfellowshipped a couple times. They enjoy sin, cry a little in front of the elders, and come back. Which kind of puts into question the whole effectiveness of the whole disfellowshipping agreement, but whatever. It's not like every religion. It's not quite like that. If someone commits a serious sin, uh, confesses it, is sorry, and doesn't do it again, then they lose privileges in the congregation. But what if they aren't sorry? Or what if they keep doing it? Well, then they may get disfellowshipped. Wow. You mean like kicked out? Not exactly. They can still come to congregation meetings, they're just not allowed to socialize with anyone. Seriously? Wow, that sounds a bit extreme. I tend to agree. Okay, well, it, it may seem that way, but it's a protection for the people in the congregation. And the hope is it will help the person to stop doing bad. And if they do, then eventually everyone welcomes them back. Yeah, it does seem extreme. Tell me you're in a cult without telling me you're in a cult. Wow, I don't know how long I would last in your religion. <laughs> yeah, it's not for everyone. Well, kids, fun time is over. Dave, we really should be getting back to work. Why don't we see if the conference room's open? Okay. What is with you? What? Why'd you have to bring up all that disfellowshipping stuff? And birthdays? I didn't bring it up, they did. Why didn't you just tell them about Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny while you were at they it? They wanted to know. What was I supposed to do? Change the subject. Like, you can't shove our beliefs down their throats. I wasn't shoving anything. Listen, talking about religion at work is never a good idea. Such a turnoff, especially with certain people. Like who? Uh, pretty much everybody. Will Parsons? What did you talk to that guy for? I don't know, he was helping me with my computer. He seemed like a nice guy. Well, looks can be deceiving. Yeah, maybe Al overreacted a little, but I mean, it's kind of understandable. Watchtower is probably the last thing he wants to talk about. Listen. You said what you needed to say. I just think it's best if we keep our beliefs to ourselves from now on.
David learns how to use the bathtub. Well, I was just reading Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a boy according to the way for him. Even when he grows old, he will not turn aside from it. John, did we do our best to train them? You know, we could have always done something different, but we trained them by our example to put spiritual things first. We were always open with them. We listened, took them on family vacations. We studied with them and we showed them love. And you know what else? They had the most loving, caring mother in the entire world. So yes, we did our best to train them. Now it's up to David not to turn aside as he gets older. I hate the suffering this cult imposes upon JW parents when their children don't believe exactly as they do. Feeling like they somehow failed as parents. I could see my mother's expression reflected on this lady's face and it sucks. Truthfully, I'm not a mom. Would this amount of noise even be allowed in a tiny New York apartment? David learns the consequences of binge drinking at 21. There is a whole lot that can go wrong between now and our deadline. We need to stay sharp and keep our eyes on the prize. Oh, Bible reference. So let's keep up the good pace and show the big boys in corporate what this branch can do. I don't care what it takes. I want this done by deadline. He is one of our biggest clients. It's due by tomorrow. I'm sorry. Okay, you're going to finish this if it takes all night. Here, Watchtower portrays David as the asshole who refuses to talk with his dad, but in real life, it's usually the parents who carry out the shunning when the children stray away from the religion. Oh no, he's leaving early. What a horrible piece of shit. Isn't it nice to go on a road trip instead of spreading propaganda door to door? <laughs> David learns about female anatomy. Exotic angels? What kind of kinky stuff are the guys at Bethel watching? In the parable, the prodigal, he squandered his inheritance. He, uh, he got involved with prostitutes. I mean, he even went so far as to eat pig food. David learns that moving out on your own before you're ready can suck balls. More unnecessary parental shame. I just
just found out from corporate that are transferring several accounts to the West Coast office. I have no choice but to cut staff. Unfortunately, I have to let you go. What? Corporate world moment. I don't, I don't understand. I know, I know, these things are never easy. When? Company policy is pretty strict. It's effective immediately. Now, you haven't been here long, but I can probably arrange for you to get two weeks severance. Two weeks? Listen, if anything opens up in the future, I'll keep you in mind. And please, feel free to use me as a reference. I mean, he said this in the nicest way possible. How could this happen? What went wrong? I don't know. It wasn't supposed to be this way. I had no idea. I mean, all this time I've been putting in? I've devoted my whole life to this company. Look, Dave, we'll get you another job. I know people at other places. In this economy? Are you kidding me? I can't believe this! Come on, calm down. That's easy for you to say. You still have a job. You're not broke. I have $5,000 in credit card debt. I couldn't even pay my car insurance last month. I was supposed to be getting a raise, not fired. Come on, I'll help you with something. Maybe get you through a couple weeks. I can loan you some of my bonus. You got a bonus? What, you get a promotion too? Why are you yelling at all? It's not his fault. Really? I'm sorry, bro. It's company policy. Mr. Barker, could you come with me to your desk? You should show me more appreciation than that. Believe it or not, this isn't about you. Do me a favor and just stop talking. Asshole. I shouldn't drive. We can take the train. I'll get my car in the morning. The train? At this hour? What are you, crazy? Fine, we'll take a taxi. A taxi? You barely had anything to drink. I had enough. I'm not driving. Fine. I'll drive. That's not a good idea, and you know it. Come on, give me my keys back. Look, maybe you don't know how to handle your liquor, but I do. You're starting to sound like my mother. Just get in the car. Dude, you totally just ran a red light. It just turned red. There wasn't even a car in sight. Why don't you stop whining? Oh look, they hired an actual police car prop for this shot. <laughs> they had a better budget back then when they didn't beg for money. Oh, I cannot believe this. Perfect. I told you we should have taken the train. What are you doing? Why are you speeding up? Far enough ahead, I can lose him. Are you out of your mind? I'm not about to lose my license. Well, you should have thought of that before you took my keys. This is ridiculous, dude. What are you... Come on, man. Just pull over. Does this car have anything in it? Shut up! I'm trying to concentrate! On what? Getting us killed? What are you doing?
this. Look what you've done to my car. Who cares? I'll pay for it. We gotta go. We're not going. They'll run my plates. They'll know it's mine. Report it stolen. I'm not gonna do that. Come on, we gotta go now. Right hand back. This literally ended in the worst possible way. This is what Watchtower imagines will happen to people that fall away from the religion and <laughs> become literal criminals. But the thing is, all the criminals are already inside the congregations. <laughs> That's what happens to you for falling asleep on the meetings, you useless fuck. Well, I gotta admit, it was kind of embarrassing playing Bad News Al. You know, I had to say and do these despicable things. Nothing that I would do in real life, of course. David Barker. Security cameras corroborated your story. Your buddy's been arrested. Well, good thing David is out of the jail. His niches don't last very long behind bars. He gets to keep his anal virginity intact for another day. Goodbye, little sheep. Hey, Taylor, it's David. Wow, a worldly person helping out David in his hour of need. She deserves to be destroyed in Armageddon. I cannot believe that Al did that. What was he thinking? I don't know. I've never seen him like that. Well, hopefully he can get a good lawyer and sort everything out. Yeah, I hope so. I'm sure he'll think of something. It is Al after all. <laughs> True. What about you? What are you going to do now? I guess start by getting a job. Any job. And other than that, I'm not sure. You're a talented, honest, hardworking guy. Something is going to come your way. I know it. Don't worry. Thanks. I just wish that I had the same confidence. Ooh, she's got some plans. Well, Taylor, thank you for uh, letting me use your dryer and having me over. Yeah, of course. Well, I appreciate it. But it's getting late. I probably should go. <laughs> no, that's crazy. It's pouring outside. You'll just get soaked. You could stay here until it stops. It could rain all night. I should get going. That's OK. You could sleep on the couch if you have to. You are not going out in this. <laughs> well, then, I guess the decision has been made for me. It has. Besides, we still have this bottle of wine to finish. You sure you want to hang out with an ex-convict? A broke, unemployed, carless ex-convict at that? You forgot unshallow stalker. 
Oh, yes. How could I ever forget that? <laughs> Get it right, David. You think I should put that on my resume? Oh, definitely. Consider it done. <laughs> 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 One eternity later. David. Please don't go home tonight. Ooh, I wonder what happened inside. They probably stayed up and played some Scrabble, right? A perfectly normal life experience, completely ruined by this cult. So sorry. <laughs> Can you ever forgive me? <laughs> oh, please, the sovereign lord of the universe is concerned that you're losing your B card? David. He was probably busy watching children starve to death to be concerned with your first time using your holy staff. What a silly scene. <laughs> it doesn't get more dramatic than pouring rain, harsh lighting, sad music, and a whole lot of sobbing. <laughs> Jehovah, I'm sorry for engaging in consensual sex. Will you ever forgive me? <laughs> this book is old light. What Manasseh did was shocking. But was he a lost cause? Was he beyond hope? Let's read 2 Chronicles chapter 33, verse 12. And as soon as it caused him distress, he softened the face of Jehovah his God. Jehovah forgave Manasseh. What can we learn from that? When a person sins, even seriously, and shows true repentance by abandoning his wrong course and making every effort to do what is right, he's not a lost cause. He's not beyond hope. Our loving God, Jehovah, will forgive him in a large way. Manasseh sacrificed children to pagan gods and killed a bunch of prophets. David had sex with a consenting adult. How are these two things even slightly related? Yeah, I'm 
so sorry. feeling relieved upset nervous I'm so disappointed in myself for, for bringing reproach on Jehovah's name David how did you bring reproach to Jehovah's name you didn't kill anyone you didn't commit fraud or slander someone's reputation after you did the deed with your girlfriend I'm sure she wasn't thinking to herself Hmm, Jehovah must suck because this guy spent the night with me. She was probably thinking, Hmm, why did he finish in 30 seconds and walk out crying into the rain? Son, if your heart is condemning you, then just remember that the Bible assures us that God is greater than our hearts. We serve a loving and merciful Father. I know, I know. But... but Dad... What if I get this fellowship? David's fear is completely understandable here. I've already caused you and mom so much pain. If that happens, then we're going to work with it. David, these brothers really care about you. So whatever they decide, we need to view it as an expression of Jehovah's love. Thank you, Dad. Thanks. I'll be right here when you're done. Okay. David will now proceed to sit in front of three old men as they ask him very personal questions about what he did that night. Like, who initiated the sex, what positions they engaged in, etc. Yeah, these are actual questions that have come up in judicial committees. I wish I was joking. Then the three men will pray to their Canaanite storm god for Holy Spirit, talk among themselves for a bit, and based upon their own fucking mind, <laughs> dictate whether David deserves to be disfellowshipped and shunned or simply reproved. Either way, he's going to be publicly humiliated in front of the entire congregation as his brothers and sisters gossip among themselves, wondering what horrible sins David must have indulged in. <laughs> Best life ever, folks! Dad was probably rereading the story about Lot and his daughters. <laughs> Kinky old man. Thank you. It feels really good to be back in Jehovah's house again. come to know with constant devotion to our God and King godly joy and service we will show damn did any of your parents sing kingdom melodies outside the kingdom hall mine didn't <laughs> you two are in a good mood what's the special occasion well on the way home from service we thought why not have a meal for your brother and have a few friends over so we're having David's favorites Roast beef, mashed potatoes, green beans, and apple pie. Yes. John, I forgot the whipped cream. Could you run to the store and pick some up for us? You're kidding me, right? Hey, Dad. So I talked to Brother Harper, and he said they're going to make it. Get your own whipped cream. Jesus, James, shut the fuck up and go to the store. So, where are you planning to go? I don't know. Proud to a friend's house. I just gotta get out of here for a while. How old is James? Oh, 13? I see. You know what, Dad? I just don't get it. I'm the one who sticks with the family business. 
I'm the one who remains faithful. I try and do everything right. No one's singing when I get home. No one's throwing me a party. Son of a bitch. Please, can we just talk for a moment? You have stuck with us. You have been faithful. Your mother and I love you for that. And I'm so proud of you. And it's true, your brother has made some bad choices. And he's paying for that. But he's back now. What choice did he have? He spent all of his money doing who knows what, and you just let him back in. He's shown repentance, and he's accepting the discipline. After what he said to me, what he's done to us, I warned him. I practically begged him, and he just ignored it. I'm not buying it. I know he's hurt you. What the hell? How did David ever hurt you, James? Sure, he pushed your ass into the family piano, but only after he warned you to stay out of his face. All you have given your brother is narky remarks and a horrific attitude. You should be the one apologizing, James. Your brother was spiritually dead. How do you know that? But now he's come back to life. And he needs you now more than ever. Can't you find some way to forgive him? And to welcome him back? I know that's what I'm supposed to do. But I just don't feel that way. I'm sorry. Morning, Mom. Well, you certainly are up bright and early and making breakfast. Well, I just wanted to show the greatest mom and dad in the world how much I love them. Oh, thank you. Of course. Well, what can I do to help? Nothing. You and Dad should just finish getting ready for meeting. Are you sure? Positive. Okay. Well, I could get very used to this. <laughs> Don't get used to it, woman. It's probably just a face. James, you're home. Not for long. I just had to grab a few things. I need to say something. I'm sorry. No, David, don't apologize. You're sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me cut it with everyone else, but not with me. I'm not so gullible. James, please don't do this to me. To you? Well, then don't do this to mom and dad. We can't keep putting them through this. Well, you should have thought of that months ago. I know. I know this is all my fault. I wish I could go back and do things differently. Well, the damage is done, isn't it? I gotta go. James. David, get out of my way. James, I know that sorry doesn't cut it, but please, just one minute, just hear me out. For all the bad things that I've done, and I know now how much you cared about me, but how much you love me. And I didn't care. And I wouldn't listen. You were right about so many things. Oscar worthy performance here. But now I'm asking you, as the one that I used to look up to, as the one that taught me how to swing a hammer, James. I'm asking you, as the one that taught me to beat me, 
James, I'm asking you, as your little brother, please forgive me. Because if you can't, I can't live with myself. None of us are professional actors. You're telling me you got your time in for the month already? How'd you manage that? All in the scheduling, bro. Start early in the day, early in the week, early in the month. And early in the year. That's what everyone's been saying. I hope I can make it work. Bro, just make up some numbers. Everyone does it. I know you will. When you start pioneering, we'll make a good team. Yeah, we will. I'm looking forward to it. Normal human beings don't speak like this. James, you want to read our theme text this morning? It's taken from 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Now, however, there remain faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. So it looks like we're talking about love this morning. David, you want to read our comments? Sure. Now, among Jehovah's people today, we see the wisdom of pursuing the surpassing way of love. Truly, it excels in any and all situations. Note how the Apostle Paul emphasized that truth. He concluded, now, however, there remain faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Well, that's the movie, folks. A modern masterpiece of filmmaking, if I do say so myself. Sure, the prodigal returns might be cringe, like really cringe, but I think it's actually a very intimate look at the psychology of a Jehovah's Witness. We see how a modest American family is torn to shreds by this cult in every possible way. First of all, James. He represents an exemplary Jehovah's Witness who is perpetually paranoid not only about outsiders, but also about fellow worshippers whom he considers spiritually weak. James has no personal boundaries, is vindictive, and is quick to sing his own praises. If you've never been a Jehovah's Witness, you might think that James is an extraordinary case. He just happens to be an asshole. But the truth is, life inside this religion really facilitates narcissistic tendencies to flourish. The watchtower is full of James. Mom and dad also suffered a great deal. They feel tremendous guilt because their son has fallen slightly out of line. Jehovah's Witness parents will be made to feel like failures if their children do not follow their religion, and it just makes me really sad. David has it even worse. He wishes for independence because he has lived an extremely sheltered life constantly monitored by his parents and his psychopath brother. Sure, David made some dumb moves like moving into the city last minute and maxing out his credit card, but these are mistakes any young person can make. These mistakes are not caused by becoming spiritually weak, they're just things that happen in life. David experienced something that most human beings eventually go through, losing your virginity, which is a memorable occasion if you do it with someone you actually like. But his indoctrination absolutely ruined the experience for him and literally makes him have a mental breakdown under the rain. How is this healthy in any way? In the course of 90 minutes, David goes from an ambitious and curious young man to an emasculated slave yearning for discipline, apologizing for shit he shouldn't apologize for, all because of his indoctrination. Watchtower ruins everything. And even though this movie ends in a happy note, this is a fairy tale after all. Real life is never this simple. Sometimes repentant people will be disfellowshipped and shunned, and even kicked out of their homes. The prodigal returns is, simply put, propaganda. Produced to scare members from leaving the religion, unless they want to end up in a jail like all, or inviting them to submit to humiliating spiritual discipline. 
which teaches members to be submissive to the divine order. To any who are faltering spiritually or straying from the truth, we'd like to leave you with this text found at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25. Please return to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. All of this insane protocol is sharply contrasted with the parable that this movie is based on. In the original story of the prodigal son, the son goes and spends all his inheritance money on prostitutes. Not a one night stand with a close friend, no, literal prostitutes. After he is broke and starving, the son has the brilliant idea to return to his father's house and work as a slave for him because it's better to be a slave in his father's house than die starving with the pigs. <laughs> Once the son returns, the father runs out to embrace him, puts a beautiful coat over him, and throws a party. Like the movie, the brother is jealous because he has remained faithful but dad never throws him parties and the dad just kinda tells him to cut his shit and celebrate with him. But unlike the movie, the prodigal son did not have to meet with three elders to judge his repentance. In fact, the son didn't return because he was repentant, but because he was starving. But still, the father simply embraced him and forgave him. I think it's a really beautiful story. And this film is like a twisted parody of it. <laughs> Jesus would probably fucking die again if he watched this nonsense. All in all, I'm gonna give this movie an 8 out of 10 in the cult meter. <laughs> not the best, but definitely not the worst, by any means. But please, let me know what you thought of this film in the comments below. If you cringed, please let me know the exact moment you lost it, put it in the comments. And if you unironically enjoyed the film, well, you can also comment that. I'm not gonna judge you, I promise. <laughs> Keeping this channel running takes a lot of my time and energy, so if you would like to financially support Panda Tower, please head over to Patreon or become a member of this channel. It really makes a difference, I want to keep doing this for a long time, so if you have $1 to spare a month, I think it adds up if a lot of people can contribute. So if you're feeling generous about it, I invite you to check out Patreon or the channel subscription. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, take it easy, and stay away from the tower. The best part of this movie are the reviews on IMDb. This movie completely fails to comprehend the actual moral that Jesus was teaching, that love and forgiveness are the best fruits of Christianity. Instead, it replaces that kind message with a pharisaic emphasis upon rules and the level of infantilization that is creepy at best. Yep. <laughs> the movie good, but the guy who played Owl carried the whole team. First off, the mother is really annoying and pointless, adds nothing to the movie. The story good, a bit cheesy at times. Owl is the best character, well written and very well connected. Also, there are crossover which connects this movie to a different movie which makes this a multiverse. <laughs> there are a couple of clips that bother, for example, why why did he got in the car with Al or why didn't the cops tackle the main guy on the ground? The most cheesy part is when they sang together, it was unnecessary. The best part are Al or the CEO, they played both well. Uh, I would say this is arguably the best film ever, but it's not arguably, this film is the greatest film of all time and the actors are incredible. This is peak realistic fiction and I highly recommend it. Another W in the JW Cinematic Universe.